to the book of Psalms, and then we'll Psalm 81. I want to share with you guys a verse that has been on my mind for, for quite a while now. It's, uh, it's actually the Lord laid this verse on my heart shortly before we started uh, purchasing the bus, the, the blue bus that we have out here, and then we had the other bus given to us, and then after that, a little while later, we went and we purchased the, um, the yellow bus. And th this verse, the, the Lord laid on my heart, and he really hasn't given me the liberty to preach it up until this time, although there's been a lot of times that I've wanted to preach this verse. But um, as Pastor had called me and asked me to preach, I, I felt led to, to come to this verse today. And uh, you guys are going to kind of get the jumbled up mess of what goes on in my brain. Maybe, maybe a little bit of that today. But uh, th this verse, as I had said, it, it weighs heavy on my heart quite a lot. And um, I'd just like to share it with you. Before we get to the verse uh, today, uh, Christmas time is now behind us. And I, I think of a question that I got asked a lot, and I asked a lot of people. And maybe you guys have experienced the same question throughout Christmas season. And uh, it was, what do you want for Christmas? Anybody ask that or get asked that question? <laughs> Did anybody have a response ready? When somebody asks you that, some people are nodding their head like, oh yeah, I had a response ready. <laughs> what do you think the typical response when you ask somebody, what do you want for Christmas is? What's that? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Something? Something. I don't know. I, I heard that and I, I used it a lot too uh, this, last, this last year. And I think about that question and... That, that's quite often in our lives, that's a typical thought that we have in our lives toward a lot of things. What do you, and you got to bear with me, I was thinking in, in regards a lot of times to the teens, and uh, as I was thinking about that question, so often when, when we ask teenagers, what do you want to do with your life? What do you, what do you expect God to do with you? What do you, what do you anticipate for your future? Many times the question is, oh, so that's usually how teams how it comes out. Is it not? I don't know. It's, uh, you know, because that's how teams talk is in grunts and groans. Um, but this question is often asked because we legitimately want to know what to buy for somebody. Obviously, if we're going to buy a present for somebody for Christmas, we want to know what they. I don't want to get something for somebody that they don't want that they're never going to use. I want to give them something that they're going to be excited about that they. That they, now you guys are all making the list out for me, right? Here's what I want, Justin. We're getting to a point here. Some people say, I don't know. Some people specifically know what they want. And the thing that's always exciting for me is it's nice to know when, what somebody wants, and I don't even have to ask them. Because then I can buy it, and it's like they don't even know what I've got for them. And on that note, I'm a terrible gift giver. Because when I buy something, I cannot wait to give it to the person that I bought it for. I probably, I bought Sarah's present on, um, what's the name of that, Black Friday? Yes, I went Black Friday shopping. It's a surprise, but I did. It was later on in the day, though. But I got her present, uh, so that's the day after Thanksgiving. I probably asked her every other day if I could give her her present. And she answered every other day, no, I have to wait till Christmas. And I actually had to wait until later on Christmas Day to give her a present. It was very aggravating. Um, because I, I'm not, this is a surprise, but I'm not the patient person, especially when I'm excited about something, and I want to give her a present, yeah, and that's, that's how it is for me, and uh, I, I liked it, I'm eager about it, I'm more excited about getting to give somebody their present than I am probably about getting one, but uh, I, I love waiting there and watching them open their present, and you're watching their face, and you're studying their face to see if they, if they really like it, or if they're like, oh, thank you, you know? I, I, like, I like animation, as you can tell. I'm an animated person, and I like seeing the reactions of people. And so, now imagine Christmas Day, you've, you've contemplated, you've pondered, you've, you've listened throughout the year trying to figure out what that person wants that you really care about, and, you, you, you labor and you spend time to get this gift for this person, and you're excited about it. You're, you're eagerly anticipating their reaction. You know they're going to love it, and you, you wrap it up. 
And you know I love you if I wrap your present for you because I hate wrapping presents. But you wrap it up and you give it to that person and they, they take that present and they set it down and they don't even open that present. They just leave it there. Or they take that present, they take it in their hand and they toss it back at you and say, I don't want that. Imagine how that would make you feel. And I, I can picture our Heavenly Father experiences this issue very often and his desire for each and every one of us is to bestow blessings or, or uh, great gifts upon us. But many times in our life we refuse to accept them or we're not prepared to accept them. And as I had mentioned in the beginning, I wanted to share with you a verse that the Lord had laid on my heart uh, about God wanting to, to give us blessing or give us a, a filling. So let's look at Psalm 81. We're going to start in verse 8. The Bible says this. This is God talking to Israel. He says, Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel. If thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. And then he says this in verse 10. He says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Open thou thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to be here in your house today, and I pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts. God, that we would leave today excited about serving you and, and eager about receiving a filling and a blessing from you. Lord God, if there's anyone here that today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, I pray today they would come to know you personally, and that their sins are forgiven, and they have a home in heaven. God, just speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 10 is the verse that the Lord had laid on my heart many Many months ago now, it says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. And uh, the Lord here is speaking to the nation of Israel, and he's been explaining the blessings and the deliverances that he has wrought to the nation of Israel by his hand. He's, he's telling them about how he has delivered them from their enemies, how he has uh, blessed them with, with blessings and he comes to this verse, and this verse is almost a, a turning point in the chapter as we see it. And uh, today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how to receive a blessing from God. But I don't want to look at it only in the physical way, but more so as are you ready to be filled and used by God? Are you ready? If, if God was standing up here on the altar today, uh, as the book of Ezekiel said, and he's talking, he says, I searched for a man to stand in the gap to make up the hedge. And, and what did God say? He said he found none. If God is saying, I'm looking at, for somebody that I can use, somebody that I can fill and bless, are, are we prepared as a people to be used by God? The, uh, in, on the New Year's Eve service, Pastor had asked me to share uh, my, my life verse out of Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. And uh, Pastor Crone at Snow Camp had actually preached on Isaiah chapter 6. And uh, it was basically, Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send and who will go for us? Isaiah's response was, Here I am, send me. And Isaiah was essentially sitting there as an eager boy would on Christmas morning anticipating his presence, Isaiah was saying God to God, here I am, I'm ready to be used, take me and send me, take me and use me God. The book of Psalms, uh, in, in Psalm 23 verse 5, at the end of that verse, David said, my cup runneth over. And he's talking about the blessings. He, in that psalm, he said, Surely goodness and mercy uh, shall follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord. Uh, he had talked about uh, many different things. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. But he said, My cup runneth over. And he's talking about the blessings of God, how God has blessed his life in so many different ways. That he said, God didn't only take my cup and, and fill it, and I, I'm out of water up here. But he says, I, I, my cup, it was, it was empty. I was, I was like a, a dry bone in, in the desert land. And, and God took my cup and he gave me what I needed. And David said, and he's not referencing just physical. He's talking about, about spiritual blessings in his life and how God has blessed him and given him peace and given him joy and given him deliverance and 
given him guidance in his life. And, and David says, my cup isn't full. He said, my cup runneth over, essentially saying, God has taken my cup and he's just continued to pour out these blessings upon me to where I have more than I, than I can bear, or, or not bear, but, but more than I could ever ask for, or I could ever dream of, or ever imagine. And today we have three points to look at out of the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 81, where he says, uh, Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. The first thing is, do we seek or desire a blessing? And I want to ask you today, or ask us today, do we desire to be used and blessed of God? As we look in Psalm 81, verse 10, and, and God says, Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. The reference that he is referring to here is actually as a baby bird in their nest. And have you ever seen a baby bird in the nest after they've hatched? What are they doing the whole time? Besides sleeping? Their head is turned up and their mouth is opened up. Thank you, Lexi. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm going to transfer it to this cup because it's going to be hard to set this one down. When, he's, when we see a baby bird in the nest, uh, if it's not sleeping, many times its head is turned up, its mouth is wide open, it's chirping and screaming for its mom, and you see the mom come along, or, or sometimes, depending on what, what breed of a bird it is, it's the, the father bird comes along, and they fly to the nest, and they've got a worm in their mouth that they've, we won't explain the whole process of what a bird does to feed their young, but... Uh, then they, they're sitting there with their mouths open and the, the mother bird begins to divide out the portions to her young. And those birds are sitting there, they're eagerly anticipating their food. If, uh, Sarah and I haven't had a child, but, uh, but I'm sure when your baby is ready to eat, you know it. We were in the yeah. hospital today with, uh, if you have a teenager, I work with teenagers. I know when they're ready to eat. You can, if they're guys, you always know they're ready to eat. But... Um, we were at the hospital today with, with Liam after he'd come out of his surgery. He hadn't been able to eat since 4.30 this morning. And uh, he was coming out of his, his um, anesthesia. And he was starting to look around and interact with us more. And he saw his bottle. And his eyes lit up. And his arms came out. And he was ready to go. He was ready to eat. And I'll tell you what. He downed that thing like you wouldn't believe it. But... He wouldn't be able to eat it. The baby birds wouldn't be able to receive the food from their parents if their mouths weren't open. And in the same thing in our lives, uh, do we seek to receive something from God? When we, when we are here coming to church, do we come to church with a, with a mind frame? God, my, my mouth is open. My arms are extended. Uh, my, my ear is ready to hear. My heart is, 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 is broken. I'm ready to receive something from you. As God is speaking to the nation of Israel, he says, I'm the Lord thy God, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. God was reminding the people what he had done for them, his deliverance that he had wrought for them. And if we're here today and we're saved, we're bought by the blood of Jesus, God has wrought a great deliverance for us. God has brought us from the flames of the fire of hell to, to the peace and to the, to, the, uh, to the rest that we can find in him. He took us who were dead and made us alive, and, and he's delivered us, and he says, open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Many times we approach church, and I'm guilty of this very often, is approaching church as my duty. Approaching visitation is my duty. My time in the Word of God, uh, we have these, these um, read through the Bible chronologically in a year, and many times we approach our Bible time as, i got to do it. That's one thing where, where for myself, I had stopped trying to read through the Bible in a year because it became so mundane to me, where I was just like, I can do this, I can do this. And when, you, when we read through our Bible, I'm not discouraging reading through the Bible in a year, we should, but take the time to understand, to digest what you're reading. God says, open my mouth wide, and I will fill it. When you're, when you're in your time in the Word of God, open your mouth wide to receive something from God. Do, you des do we desire uh, or seek a blessing from God? Turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, if you would. We're going to be in Luke chapter 11. 
And we're going to start in verse 5 of Luke chapter 11. In Luke chapter 11, what has basically happened is the apostles had come unto Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And we have a, uh, a, a version of the Lord's Prayer here that he had given to the apostles. And then in verse 5 is where he had ceased from, from giving them his example of a prayer. And, and we see this is what Christ says to them. Now this is, remember, this is stemming off of them asking Christ to teach them to pray. This is what Christ said. He said, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. And I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Then Christ says this, in verse 9 he says, And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Uh, as we look through this verse, uh, in, in the first section there, when it's talking the story about the, the friend going unto his friend and asking him for bread, it says that he, he, even though he may not rise just because he's his friend, uh, he says because of his importunity, uh, or his importunity, which is basically what that means is, um, where do I have the definition right now here? Uh, it, it basically means a pressing or an urging. A, a desire. Uh, a friend isn't going to know that you need three loaves of bread if you don't say anything to him. And, and here, it's what Christ is saying. is He says, he came to his friend, he knocked on the door, he asked for it, and, and he, he said, this, this person's come on a long journey, I wasn't prepared for him, can I have three loaves of bread? And it says the friend will arise because he was being asked. He was being asked with an earnest desire. And he continues on. Now remember, this is in reference to the apostles asking Christ, Lord, teach us to pray. And Christ continues on after this story and says, uh, I say unto you in verse 9, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened uh, unto you. How bad do we desire to receive a blessing from God? Do we desire to be filled by God and be used of God? Well, Christ is talking about here in reference to the, to the apostles asking Christ to teach them to pray. He is telling them, do you come to God with a desire on your heart? Do you not nonchalantly approach God and say, uh, I, God, I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you care. Uh, but, you know, this is what's going on. Can you take care of it? Or do we come to God expecting? Now, I'm not talking about greed and fulfilling our own fleshly desires. I'm, I'm talking, do we come to God seeking? When we come to God in prayer, do we come to Him asking Him and expecting Him to hear us? The Bible says in the, in the book of Hebrews, I believe it is, that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Uh, and, and what a, an incredible picture of the, the Old Testament where, where the, the priest would have to go in to the Holy of Holies once a year and perform the sacrifice. And if he didn't do it properly, God would slay him. He would be dead in the presence of God there because he had done something wrong. And when, when Christ died on the cross of Calvary, that veil that was between the holy place and the Holy of Holies was rent in two, showing that we could come boldly before God. We didn't have to worry or fear that we were going to be smitten down because of our, our imperfections, but that God accepts us based upon the righteousness of what Christ had done for us. And we can now come before God expecting and anticipating Him to hear us and to, to receive us. Do we seek a desire from God? Do we seek to be used by Him? The book of James chapter 1 and verse 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. 
Do we seek to receive something from God? He's our Heavenly Father. He loves us and He cares about us. And He wants to bless us. Now, when I'm talk, again, when I'm talking about blessing, I'm not talking just about physical things. That God, if you tithe and you give God $700, He'll bless you tenfold. And just make the check out to the church of First Freedom Baptist Church. That's not what I'm talking about here. You see, that? that's not, we don't believe that. Now, let me tell you something. Just as we talk about visitation, God honors that faithfulness, and God, we may not see people come to church that we visited, but God brings people from the other side of town, and they start coming to church, and they start to grow as a result of that. God blesses things, and when we give to God, it's not our, it's not that God, uh, God really needs our money, because God, and God is God, but we give because we know that that's what we're supposed to do as children of God. We give out a, a heart of love for Him, and God blesses in ways beyond it. Our, 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 our imagination, beyond our wildest dreams. Um, second thing, first was, do you seek a desire, uh, do you seek or desire a blessing from God? Uh, the, the second one is, will you sacrifice or prepare to receive a blessing from God? Luke chapter 11 and verse 9, it said, And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. There's a sense here that Christ is saying, you have to ask, you have to knock, you have to seek. I got that out of order, ask, seek, and knock. Christ is saying, if you, if you don't ask, you won't get it. If you don't seek, if you don't knock, it won't be open. And I'm not saying that God doesn't know our needs, because he does. And God can work in spite of our, our not asking and things. But you, do you know, we must be prepared to receive something from God. If, if my cup is full, and it's not now, because I drank some of it. But uh, if my cup were full, could I fill it anymore? No, I couldn't. All I'm going to do is pour more in and it's going to run over. Now, David had referenced his cup running over. And God was blessing him and pouring more and more blessing upon him. But in order for God to fill us, we must empty ourselves. You say, Justin, what do you mean by emptying ourselves? So often, God cannot fill us because we're already filled with other junk. We're filled with the sin itself and, and, and our own uh, desires. And in order uh, for, for us to be filled by God, we must take our cup. And empty it and say, God, I'm ready to be used. And God, I'm going to pull my pride aside and I'm going to let you fill me and use me. God, I'm going to get this junk out of my life. I'm going to get this, this wicked music out of my life. I'm going to get those, those things that I look at and those things that I desire. Uh, and I'm going to let you be my desire, God. And I, and I ask you to fill me. There's a preparation in serving God. A lot of people think, uh, and, and I had fallen guilty to this as, as a child, that when I got saved, all of a sudden everything was going to be sunshine and unicorns. And, and I just thought life was going to be great, and it was going to be yippy-skippy, and nothing was going to happen. And then one day I woke up and I realized that this is the world. And I'm stuck to this, this vile flesh, as is every other person in this world. And although my spirit is made new and my spirit is made alive, the Bible says he brought me up out of the miry clay and he set my feet upon a rock and he established my goings and put a new song in my mouth. And, and he said all of that, although, although that's the case, I realized that I still had to every day get up and crucify the flesh. And I still had to get up and, and moment by moment, even though in the morning I may have read my Bible and prayed and, and said, God, today is your day and, and we're going forward and everything's going to be great. And then all of a sudden I, I step out of bed and the dog left her chew toy right there on the edge of the bed. And I, I, I step on it and it hurts my foot. And then all of a sudden it's right there. I got to crucify my flesh. I got to crucify my flesh. Do I cave or do I stand? There's a preparation that comes from being filled and being used by God. God has said in Psalm 81, 10, open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. But we must be prepared. You ever see a, a, a baby try to, uh, maybe not a baby, but like a, a toddler, that's the term. A, a toddler, when they're eating, what do they like to do a lot of times? They will just take that food and they're like, 
and their cheeks will start to, to pull out, and, and you're here. What do you have to do as the parent? Slow down, slow down. Oh, no, don't. Joshua never does that, right? Never. And you gotta, you gotta slow by because the, they'll choke or, or, or they're not gonna be able to chew it, they're not gonna be able to breathe, and, and, and you gotta, they can't receive any more food because they're so full of it already, they can't take anything more, and, and they've gotta get that out of there before they can receive any more. And, and so often, we're not willing to lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us, and we can't be used of God because we're so full of everything else. We keep our pride, our possessions, and our path locked in so tight, and we want to hold on to it all, that, that God says, I, I, want, I want to give you something, but your hands are clamped shut, and you can't receive it. And what God wants us to do in our life is God wants to say, God, my pride, I, I give that up. My, 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 my plan, I give that up. My path, I give that up, all for you. What you want me to do, I'll do. Where you want me to go, I'll go. Whatever it is, God, direct my steps. Here I am. Use me, God. And we open our hands. We open our heart. We open our mouth. And God begins to lay on us things that he wants for us. And God says that there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. And he goes on and he says that he provides a way for us to escape it or get through it. When a lot of people claim that verse when they're going through trials that they've brought in their life and they're saying, why is God not delivering me from this? And, and, and I submit to you many times in my life, the problems that I experience are not God bringing these problems into my life, but I brought them into my life. And I hold on to them, and I retain them, and I hold them so tight. And God says, I'll deliver you from this if you're willing to let go of it. Are we prepared to be used by God? Have we said, God, I'm empty? Teenagers, do you find your happiness and your contentment in God and wait for his direction in life, in your, in your search for a spouse? Or do we so busy ourselves in the pursuit of a boyfriend or a girlfriend that we miss out on what God has for us? So often what winds up happening in, in the lives of teenagers, and, and there's some over here too, in the lives of teenagers, that it's, I've got to have a boyfriend, I've got to have a girlfriend, I, I, I feel so alone, I feel so empty. I, and God is simply saying, love me, love me. And I will direct you, and I will lead you, and when the time is right, I will put you right where you need to be, and just, just love me. And so often, and you see teenagers, I've got to have a boyfriend, I've got to have a girlfriend, I, I can't survive, I can't love them. They, they, they look at me and they say, I'm beautiful. Oh, man, I smell terrible, but she says she loves me, I can't believe this, it, it's got to be love. And, and so often, we get so wrapped up in that pursuit that God has something, and I'm not talking a boyfriend or a girlfriend waiting over here for us. I'm talking God has something that he wants you to learn, that God has something that he wants you to be content with him, and he wants to take you and direct you through life and not have the hurt and not have the heartache and not have the scars of past decisions that you had made when he does bring you to that person that he has for you. I tell you this because it breaks my heart to see it happen so often. Find your happiness in God and find your contentness in God. And I'll tell you what, everything else will take care of itself. But adults, it's the same for us. We get caught up in our jobs. We get caught up in our, in our stuff. We get caught up in our, our image. And, and we don't find our happiness in God. And God says, if you just find your peace in me, if you would prepare your life to be filled by me, I will bless you beyond measure. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. I will make your cup run over to the point where you can say, my blessings are more than I can bear. God, I, I'm overwhelmed with joy. I'm overwhelmed with peace because you are so good to me. Now, granted, life can be life can be tough, and we can have our trials, and we can have our tribulations in the midst of all of that. But there is a God who, through the trials, gives peace. There is a God who, who through heartache and, and hurt, can can show love and extend a hand of compassion and mercy that that somebody who does not know Him cannot understand. Do you seek? A desire, or do you seek or desire a blessing from God? Do we sacrifice or prepare to receive a blessing? And the last thing today, and we'll be quick here, are you set or ready to receive? 
a blessing from God. God says, open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Do we surround ourselves with godly people, godly influences, godly music, godly... When we say influences, it's not just people, but it's the stuff that we put around ourselves. What do we allow? Are you ready? The, the, the title of today's message is simply this, Are You Ready for the Filling? And I ask us, us all this question, do we place ourselves in positions that when God sees us, He knows we're ready to receive it? I told you that this verse was laid on my heart about the time we started getting these buses. And I truly believe God would not have blessed us with the opportunity to have, what do we have now, five buses? And we're talking about getting more, getting rid of some of the older ones, getting more. Do you realize that that little short blue bus that we have was given to us? Right. That was given to us by a church that when, they, when he called me and said, Justin, I want to give this to your church, he said, I can't promise you it'll last you very long. He said, but it's a temporary fix for you. We've had that bus over three years now. Yeah. The van we've had over five years. It was here before I was here. The, the white bus over here. Yeah, it's, it broke down on us a few times. We, we put $9,000 into it, but we didn't have a penny in that bus. Right. Getting it. it was given to us. Man, can you believe that? The blue bus, we drove to New York, and we got a great deal on the one that, that Cody drives, a blue, yellow, black, and white one. That, that bus, that, that's a great bus. It runs great. That, that yellow bus we've got out there, there there's places where, where a bus like that costs $11,000, dollars 14000 and we got it for $5,500. I'll tell you what, God would not do that for this church if he, didn't, if he didn't see that there were people in this church who were faithful and willing and ready to do a work. Amen. If we're faithful in the little things, Amen. God will bless us in the big things. Amen. And God has entrusted us. What do we get on, on a Wednesday night sometimes? 75 kids down there? Amen. God's not going to trust us with those precious little souls if we weren't prepared and ready to be used by him. <coughs> Guys, I submit to you today, open your mouth wide to be filled by God. Are you ready to receive a blessing from God? Have you placed yourself in a position where you say, God, I'm here, I'm ready to be filled, I'm ready to be used. Take me and use me. Do something great with me, God. If you expect that from God, I tell you, he will take you and he will do something great with you. It may not be what you expect. It may not be what you think or you want. But God will say, this is what I have for you. Do we approach church asking God to fill us? Do we look for opportunities to serve? Many times God calls us out of our lowly service to a higher calling. I know a lot of guys who were called to be preachers and all they were doing was going to the church on, on days when there was no service, nobody was there, and they were just cleaning the church. They were cleaning the bathrooms. They were fixing different things around the church. And God called them, and God took them to something far greater. I know missionaries who, who all they were were faithful deacons and trustees and workers around the church. They just taught Sunday school classes, and God took them, and he called them to the mission field. And I'm not saying that's what God's going to do to you if you start being faithful and working around the church. But I am saying that God will take you, and he will use you, and he will bless your life in ways that you can't even fathom. If you'll just open your heart, open your mind, open your ears, and, and, and your life, and say, God, here I am. Fill me and use me. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please.